Welcome to the Weather Insights Briefing. I'm meteorologist Scott Pitney along with meteorologist Jeff Linder. And this is Sunday morning, January 19th, as we prepare for a winter storm for Southeast Texas. Let me read the latest hazards. We have a, um, and this is not showing up on the map because they show up on the map in order of priority, but this is out there as well. We have a cold weather advisory that is in effect right now through noon tomorrow that'll likely be extended in some form and then the purple area north of the houston area that is a freeze warning now freeze warning means the second freeze warning which is the same thing a freeze warning is basically the old hard freeze warning which is temperatures below 24 at 24 degrees fahrenheit or below for more than two hours so that's north of houston that is in effect and then we have a winter storm watch that goes into effect 6 p.m. tomorrow evening and is extended through 6 p.m. Tuesday. And I want to read this, and this will likely become a warning later on today. But let me read, since we don't get these very often in southeast Texas, exactly what is a winter storm watch means. Heavy snow and sleet are possible. Potential for heavy bands of snow could result in snowfall totals of up to 5 inches and higher in some areas as the banding as we see with banding locations of heavy snow bands are uncertain so it could be anywhere in the watch area which includes all of uh, uh, houston most of southeast texas you can see it on the map there ice accumulations of a tenth of an inch are possible south of i-10 road impacts especially bridges and overpasses will likely become hazardous plan on slippery conditions and delay all travel if possible and if you do have to travel make sure that you use extreme caution so as far as those temperatures go we are these are current temperatures and i like this graphic jeff because you can see where that purple is which is single digits and minus that's the really cold arctic air so that's still coming this way a lot of texas already in the 20s there in central texas single digits along the panhandle and then you get warmer to the south but uh, a lot of this area is going to turn purple and white over the next several hours jeff oh yeah we got we got ourselves a good old-fashioned snowstorm coming and yeah. uh you know it's it's even it's even hard to even say these words snow and 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 anything along the gulf coast but not only for our area but Louisiana and the Mississippi, Alabama, Georgia, this is going to be an impactful, potentially historic event uh, for some of these areas. Not sure here locally exactly how we're all going to end up with the precipitation. We'll talk about that in a little bit. Um, but these are the low temperatures for tomorrow morning, Monday. So you can see mid to upper 20s across much of the metro area. And then that hard freeze that you mentioned further to the north. We're talking Huntsville over towards College Station, 23, 24. You know, this is this is yes, we get to their criteria, but this is not going to be hours and hours below that 24 degrees. So I think for the most part, if you've taken your precautions, we're going to be fine on Monday morning. Again, no precipitation Monday morning. So this is just a dry, cold, uh, windy event, low wind chills and all that. It's already cold out there. And so it's just going to get colder as we as we continue to go for the next uh, 24 to 36 hours. This is look at the low temperatures on Tuesday morning. About the same, maybe a degree or two higher, and this is because we are going to get a little bit of warm air trying to push in from the south with that Gulf low coming in, and we're also going to have clouds and precipitation ongoing, but you can see here everybody is below, well below freezing, so regardless of the precipitation type, if it's snow, if it's sleet, if it's freezing rain, it is going to accumulate at these temperatures, and it is going to accumulate on all surfaces, so we're not just talking about the bridges and overpasses here. We're talking about surface streets. We're talking sidewalks. We're talking parking lots. Uh, anywhere that this stuff falls, we're going to have accumulation. And it's going to be kind of a quick accumulation. And we'll talk some more about the, the winter part here in just a second. But this is the part I really want to focus on. This is Wednesday morning. So likely we're going to have snow cover on the ground. The skies are going to clear out. The winds are going to come down. And this is almost excellent conditions for what we call radiational cooling or what little heat we have escaping out into space. And you can see uh, these are really, really low temperatures now for Wednesday morning. We're talking mid-upper teens down into the metro area, low 20s and teens all the way down to the coastal counties, even towards Galveston Island, you know, below freezing. 
and low to mid teens up to the north and west. You know, thirteen out here at Lagrange, fourteen, fifteen around College Station. I mean, these these are cold numbers. This is definitely the night that you know you got to get that heat against the walls up in your attic to keep those pipes potentially from freezing, keeping a little bit of water flowing through them, maybe. Whatever we got to do to get through this night, because this is this is really really cold stuff here, and this is the 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 temperatures where we could start to have issues with infrastructure and stuff like that. So, good news is we're not expecting uh, a lot of power outages, you know, from the from the from the ERCOT side with generation. This this cold weather event actually it may be colder here on Wednesday morning than other parts of the state because we have the snowpack on the ground. Um, and the other thing is we're not anticipating issues with some of our renewable sides because of where the, the precipitation and clouds are going to be. So West Texas and North Texas actually may be fine with respect to precipitation and clouds with this event. So this is not 21 where the whole state was involved. This is what I would call more of a regional type storm or local type storm where it's really down here along the Gulf Coast and in Southeast Texas. And that's going to help us on the power side. Could we have some localized power outages you know, with this wet snow getting a little heavy on some of the tree limbs and maybe the tree limb touches the power line. Yes, that could happen. But we're talking localized. We're talking street level, you know, block level, not widespread outages across the area. And if you actually look at the ERCOT generation and demand, there's about a 10 to 15,000 kilowatt buffer uh, right now between what we're generating and the demand. So that's really good. We don't even really get concerned unless it gets down to around four or 5,000 kilowatt buffer. So we're doing really well on generation side, and I don't think we're going to have any significant problems with power, which will greatly help us be able to keep that heat against the walls. You know, open up those cabinets, get as much heat against those outside walls of your house or structures you possibly can. All right, talking about what everybody wants to know, the winter weather, the winter storm, is it going to snow and how much is it going to snow? Um, well, the first thing is we still have a little bit of uh, dif dif differences on the, the temperatures aloft. So we're talking up there around four or 5,000 feet. There's the potential for a little bit of warm air to work into the region, especially south of I-10. And that could potentially change the snow over to a little bit of freezing rain and sleet. And, and, and sleet looks to be more prominent than freezing rain. We really don't think we're going to get a lot of freezing rain, maybe just the start of this. North of I-10, it looks like it's going to be mostly snow. So we'll keep an eye on this. These are some of the snowfall totals. Again, I don't want people to lock in uh, on this. This is just like a heavy rain event. And, you know, we tell you, well, we're going to get, you know, one to three inches and then there's going to be some locally higher amounts. And this is the same thing with snow. So you can see pretty much the entire region is likely to get anywhere from a dusting up to three inches. And then there's going to be some of these areas that we see some higher local totals. And the, the chances of this appear to be highest northeast of the metro area from the northeast side of downtown across Liberty County and then up north of Beaumont and then over into Louisiana. But it wouldn't surprise me if we see some of these banding features that Scott talked about kind of back down to the southwest. And you can get some really heavy snowfall in these bands. So locally, it wouldn't surprise me if somebody ends up with six or eight inches here somewhere in southeast Texas. That That's certainly on the table. I, I can't uh, remember the last time this widespread of a snow event has happened with these potential type totals. So you got to go really yeah. back to Christmas of 04, but that was really further to the south. And we had some of these banding features. And we had 12, 13 inches down around the Victoria and Bay City area. Again, starting out possibly as a little bit of freezing rain. I think this is going to go over to sleep pretty quick. But general accumulations here, less than a tenth of an inch. So this is not to the level where we would be expecting any issues with the trees and the power lines and anything like that. But obviously, this would produce ice on the roadways and elevated surfaces. So just, just even a little bit of freezing rain can cause some big problems. Again, most likely down here, Jackson County, Matagorda, Bazoria, maybe up into Wharton, down to Victoria. I know the the graph here is kind of uh, not showing anything down here, but you're definitely likely going to yeah. get freezing rain and maybe even some sleet mm -hmm. uh, down here in these areas around uh, the coastal bend. And what I'm going to show you next is the is the winter weather impact across the area. And so this has been continuing to get worse and worse now that we're within the range. And you can see we're talking anywhere from moderate to major impacts across our region. Um, and that means significant disruption. And the real big, the real big disruption is going to be on travel. 
Uh, we do not anticipate uh, conditions really uh, favorable for any type of driving. It, it Tuesday travel may be really almost impossible here. And, and, and you know, when you start talking about it, it's not only the ice, but, and, and, you know, the snow is falling. And when the snow falls, it, it hits the warm, the ground's going to be a little bit warmer. So that first initial mark, part of snow is going to melt into a very thin layer of ice on all the pavement. And then you're going to pile snow on top of it, which helps insulate that thin layer of ice. And it's very, very difficult for any sort of road crews or anything like that to get down the material down to that little thin layer of ice that's going to be insulated under that snow. And so travel on all roads is going to be extraordinarily difficult Monday night into Tuesday, Tuesday night, even into Wednesday. Yep. And the, the, the message right now is get to where you're going to be by 6 p.m. on Monday and plan to stay there probably until Wednesday afternoon, maybe even Thursday morning before we warm up enough to really melt some of this off. And if we really do get some of these bigger totals in these bands, this snow could linger into Thursday and even into Friday before we can melt it off. So significant impacts here to travel, if not impossible, travel on Monday night and Tuesday. And again, visibility is going to come way down. And if, you, if you're going to go out, if you're going to do it, if you're going to go out and travel, you have to do it. Take uh, supplies with you because there's the potential that you could get trapped on some of these roadways um, mm -hmm. with just the snow piling up really quickly and the slipperiness of what's going to happen out there. You know, you have to be careful. And it's going to be really difficult even for emergency responders to respond, um, given the amount of snow we may have around here on Tuesday, especially in the morning hours. So the last couple of things I wanted to show was we, we've kind of talked about this banding, these banding features. We're going to get a little bit of instability in here. Um, and you can see this is the, the differences now in our high resolution models. We've been kind of waiting to come into the range of this and we're now in the range of it. And you can see this is for Intercontinental Airport. You can see the, the mean snowfall here around two inches or so up on the north side of, of Harris County. And you can see all of these uh, members here that show the higher totals. Um, high end potential anywhere from six inches to, you know, maybe even more. And then we do have several members down here lower than two inches, between one and two inches. And so this kind of shows you these, these, these members that show that banding and where we could get some of the higher totals. And I wanted to show you what that looks like on actually the model. This is the NAM. And you can see here these dark uh, streaks are these heavy bands of, of snow and it wouldn't totally surprise me with some of the instability if you got a lightning strike out there when this was happening either but you can see here very heavy banded precipitation across the large portion of the region as we get into Tuesday morning into the midday hours and so this is this is going to be quite the sight, um, something <laughs> we do not see around here very often. Thunder uh, snow Jeff is that what we're talking about? Well, I didn't want to say it, but <laughs> well, could. when there's lightning, <laughs> yeah, we we could if we have enough instability, we could uh, get a lightning strike or two with this. Uh, you know, if you look out here in the Gulf, this is the surface low way out yeah. here, mm -hmm. and there's more convective nature out here. But it wouldn't totally surprise me if you heard a clap of thunder in some of these heavy bands, and you can see the difference. If you look here, you can see these banding dark features versus back here to the west where it's more of a solid smooth color this is more of a what we call a stratiform or a steady you know light to moderate snow and this is certainly moderate to at times heavy to very heavy snow um you know this is like i said this is going to be a sight to see uh, yeah. if this holds as we get into tuesday uh across the area yeah yeah, very interesting. Something we don't see a lot in Southeast Texas. Um, yeah, and we didn't uh, mention the four Ps, but all four Ps obviously are in place. People, plants, pets, pipes. Also the fifth P, pull, pools. So make sure if you got a pool that you're um, aware of what needs to be done to winterize that pool. Check with your pool guy or your manufacturer. But everything comes to play. RVs, I mean, we're, we're talking very cold temperatures, as Jeff mentioned, into the upper teens for most of Houston Metro Wednesday morning. And we'll have another update tomorrow here on Weather Insights. Make sure you're subscribed to our channel. Turn on those notifications to watch and listen. Also, go to our website and check out the blog if you prefer to read the Weather Insights blog. And we will have another update tomorrow morning. Jeff, good stuff. Thank you very much.